I get a lot of great comments that provide constructive criticism or advice that I should take into consideration or things that I should purchase for the property that would help me out in the long run. But every now and then I get one of those comments that tells me that I am not prepared and I should just admit defeat and head on home. Can you believe this mess? I can't. I'm astounded that I have all the standing water on my property in Alaska where I knew it rained. I knew we got a lot of snow. But you know, when I came out to look at this property, it was completely dry. This same time of the year, just two years ago, and there wasn't any standing water on the property. But if I'd only known whatever was ahead of me, I could have been prepared. I can't see into the future and I don't know what else is yet to happen. So I guess I'm not prepared. Guess I should probably call it quits, huh? Head back to Colorado, go back to city life. <sighs> Would you look at that? The only wood I have for tonight's fire stacked up against the front of the cabin is some wet wood that was left on the ground last fall, right before the major snowfall happened. I guess I wasn't prepared because I didn't get all that wood up off the ground before the snow fell. I got most of it, but the fact that I left some of it on the ground, I obviously wasn't prepared. I'm surprised I made it through this winter. In fact, I'm surprised I made it through the last two. Foolish me to think I was prepared. I guess I better go fix my last meal here and pack my bags and head back to Colorado. You know what else I'm not prepared with? I don't have anywhere to sit. This has been my dining room chair since I arrived in Alaska. Doesn't matter to me. I don't mind sitting on the cooler to eat dinner. He and I don't care that I'm sitting on the cooler to eat dinner. But if I'm ever gonna have some guests, I should probably get some dining room chairs. I know. Let's head into town and do just that. time in the Matsu Valley this um, the end of last week and over this past weekend and part of the reason that I was in the Matsu Valley there's Kenai jumping down off the uh, bed upstairs part of the reason that I was in the Matsu Valley this weekend was because a former co-worker of mine who has accepted a job up in Barrow had come down to Anchorage and I offered to meet him out there and show him around the Matsu Valley while I was in Anchorage and actually in Wasilla, I was at Sportsman's Warehouse where I happened to meet Adam and Phyllis from Alaska Cut the Cord. And they are just as personable and authentic as you see in each of their videos. So I had a nice chat with them and then I headed back to my cabin. You like them? I do. I happen to think that these are wonderful addition to the kitchen. So I originally saw these on Craigslist and it was just the chairs. But when I got there, they actually had a table to match, a beautiful Chippendale shape table. And while I already had a Chippendale table sitting here and all I was really needing was some Chippendale chairs to match, I couldn't resist getting the table because this one doesn't necessarily need to be refinished. I say necessarily because it's not perfect. It does have some scratches and some water damage and a couple dings and dents. But, you know, at first glance, it's really a beautiful table. And like I said, I did need some chairs. 
So last year when my son was out here and my friend from work, I really didn't have any place for them to sit other than in a camp chair or on a cot. When my friend comes back out this summer, because I'm pretty sure she's going to, I'd like for her to have a place to sit at the table. My son will also be back out this summer and I'm hoping that my mom and daughter are able to make their way out to Alaska this summer as well. And so when they arrive here, I should be able to have a nice place for each of them to sit and have a decent meal. But going back to the topic of being prepared, I get a lot of comments saying that I'm not prepared to live in Alaska or to live this lifestyle regardless of where I'm at. But if you wait until you're absolutely prepared for whatever might come your way, you'll never make a move. You'll have preparedness paralysis, if you will. I know for myself that I've made it two winters here in Alaska. And while there have been some minor issues that have come up, I've been able to overcome all of them. And honestly, as I mentioned outside, you don't know what you don't know. You can't see into the future and you can't plan for every potential occasion because things are gonna change and things are gonna happen that you just couldn't foresee. Also, I don't know about you, but most people, including myself, are working off of a limited budget. To me, it was more important to get to Alaska and to start to live my dream than it was to worry about, did I have everything checked off my list of needs and wants? And the other thing is, is that there are people in the community who are able to lend a hand when you need it or to rent out equipment should you need it, such as getting my driveway um, regraded and getting some rock base put down and putting in some drainage. That's something I can hire out. When I moved into this cabin and needed a new roof on it, I was able to hire a contractor to come out and repair and replace the roof on my property. I'm never gonna be 100% prepared for anything that comes my way, but there does need to be a certain mindset when you're living this lifestyle that you will adapt and you will overcome and you will deal with things as they arise. I don't fear the unknown and I'm not gonna let it stop me. So enough of that, let's talk about this table and chairs and what happened to the other table that was here. Well, as I mentioned, this table, while it's not perfect, doesn't need refinishing. And so this was one of the reasons why I put this table here and the other table went upstairs into the sewing room. So let's head upstairs to the sewing room and let's talk about some of the things that got going on up there because in one of my previous videos, a couple of you had pointed out some antique sewing machines that you saw a profile of in the window. Let's go check those out and I'll show you some other things up there that I got going on. Now that this table's upstairs, this will be my cutting table so I can cut large sections of fabric without having to do it on the floor. And next to it is what will be my ironing table. So I can iron seams and the fabric itself uh, prior and during sewing. Then behind me to this side is my old sewing table. This was my grandmother's sewing table. It no longer has the sewing machine in it, but I put a new top on it and I have then my antique sewing machine set up over there. I do actually have a modern sewing machine that I'll use for the majority of my sewing projects, but some of you had seen some of my old sewing machines in a previous video and had some questions about them. So I actually have three antique sewing machines. The first one is a white rotary. This one was my great grandmother's and my aunt had given it to me right before I moved to Alaska. It is electric and I believe it's from the 1920s, maybe 1930s. I'm not exactly sure. I should probably do some research on it. Um, then my next one is a Majestic 15. That is a deluxe sewing machine and it is for a treadle, which I do have the treadle and I have a repair kit so I can repair the treadle and get 
uh, that machine working on the treadle itself. And then my last one is a Yukon. I don't know anything about this machine other than it takes a shuttle bobbin to operate. And I have two bobbins here. They're slightly different size and neither of them fit that machine. So when I bought the machine, the shuttle bobbin was actually missing. And since I don't know anything about the machine, I haven't been able to find the manufacturer of the machine um, or really much about it. I know the machine is from the 1800s. I don't know exactly when it was produced or who the manufacturer was, as I stated. And so that's why I'm having difficulty finding the exact piece for it. So that piece might just be decorative. Luckily, I didn't pay a whole lot for it, but it is um, beautiful, even though it needs a lot of work. <laughs> And that brings me right back to the cabin itself. In my opinion, this cabin is beautiful, even though, as you can see behind me, it needs a lot of work. And I could have bought a cabin that was decked out to the nines and had all of the, you know, amenities and conveniences of modern life, but that really wasn't the route that I wanted to go. And I wanted a cabin that needed some loving, tender care, a diamond in the rough, if you will. And that's exactly what this place is. My point being is going back to the comments I get about, I'm not prepared to live this lifestyle. There's no one way to live as a homesteader. There's no one way to live in Alaska. There are people that live in exquisite lodges here in Alaska. There are people that live in a typical suburban home and then there are people that live in a remote cabin such as myself or even more remote where the only way they can get there is by a float plane by hiking in taking a snow machine or a boat to their property no matter how you choose to live just remember it's your life and you get to live it and also don't let anyone discourage you from living your dream i don't take the comments of i'm not prepared to heart because I know in my heart of hearts that I am prepared. The first winter that I lived here in the cabin, I knew prior to winter setting in that I was going to potentially be snowed in on the property. There's just too much snow for the car to attempt to get through. And I was kind of going slow. I think I'm gonna need to speed her up a little bit after I dig myself out. Dang it. So this is what we're looking at as far as snow depth in the driveway. And again, I'm on several inches of packed snow underneath, but it's mid tire. That is the road. That's my driveway. There is no getting out of that. 
Here's a two and a half foot, three foot drop off right there from where they plowed me in. Son of a... It's a good thing I don't need to go anywhere. And I prepared for that. I made sure I had enough food and water to carry me through. means of melting snow if I needed to for drinking water or for cleaning and Kenai and I made it just fine. We have had a few issues that came up over the last couple of years but nothing that we couldn't handle and as I mentioned before it's a matter of overcoming and adapting to your situation. Time will only tell what is yet to happen here at this property. I know when it comes to the driveway that I did not have this issue the last two years and it's only this spring that I'm having this issue. I'm assuming that it might be because the um, driveway was plowed repeatedly this year where it was not last year. Um, but then again, I have standing water in areas where I didn't have standing water last year that weren't affected by being plowed. So there's no real way of saying what's causing that water to be standing. Someone had mentioned on my live stream that it could be because the frost hasn't left the ground yet. So the ground is still frozen, therefore the water can't seep down into it and go anywhere. Um, and that's quite potential as well. So regardless of what is happening here at the property, I'm here to stay. I'm not going anywhere. And I do encourage each and every one of you to live your dreams and to do what you feel is best for you, whether you're prepared for what comes your way or not. I have faith in you and I hope you have faith in yourself as well. Before I go over the gifts that were sent in by viewers, I would like to just put out a special message to Creative Lori and let her know that my thoughts and my prayers are with her and her father, 
her elderly father and Lori both are suffering from COVID right now. And so I wish you a speedy recovery and I hope that your father pulls through without any further issues. I do want to say thank you to everybody who kindly sent in a gift such as these scan discs. I believe these are from Linda. However, there was no tag in there. So I apologize. This fly swatter and all these goodies from Beth Gruenwald. Thank you very much. As you know, I love both coffee and caramels. So thank you very much for that. And I'm not sure who sent these in. I missed these last year, actually. I found these in a box. And so I apologize that I didn't get these acknowledged when they were first set in, these compression gauze packs. But thank you very much to the anonymous viewer who sent these in. And then thank you, Carrie Ann, for this wonderful array of gifts and cookies. I really appreciate all of this. And so does Kenai to both you and Beth for the goodies there. And thank you, Timothy, for the security uh, features that you sent in, these door blocks and the signs. I appreciate that. And then also there was no tag with this one, but thank you for the headlamps and the bacon strips for Kenai. And then Jason, thank you for this painting that you uh, painted and sent my way. This is absolutely beautiful and I really appreciate your thoughtfulness and your kindness to each and every one of you. Oh, did you not expect to see a gun cleaning station in my sewing room? Yeah, just one other way that I prepare for whatever might come. I'm prepared to dismantle and clean and repair my guns as need be, just as I'm prepared to see you on the next video. Oh, and stick around for some outtakes too, because you know I'm always full of laughs. I'm pretty sure that my friend it will be coming back out this summer, and when she does, I'd like for her to have a place to sit. I also know that my son and my mom will be coming back out. <laughs> so, as you can see, now I have a sewing table. I also have several other pieces in here. I don't know what to say. Well, this might not look like much, but this is my sewing room or loft, if you will. So you can see I've got a lot of fabric that I still need to find some type of, I don't know, I would like to have it put away in a cabinet or drawers where I can keep the dust and dog hair and things like that off of it. But <laughs> yeah, I don't want to start there. I don't want to start there. In case you haven't seen these videos, be sure to check these out next.